Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating Halloween a little early. The All-Star game, of course, was held here. Sandy Alomar was the MVP of the All-Star game, and when he came up in that last at bat, the fans here were chanting MVP for the World Series. But he hit into a double play, and uh, Levon Hernandez was able to work out of that inning. He certainly is having MVP type numbers. Oral Hershiser goes back to work. Remember, we mentioned the fact when you throw a first pitch strike, you're more apt to get the hitters out. First pitch strike, Marlins are one for 12. First pitch ball, they are four for six. And there's another one of those first pitch strikes. Renteria fouls that one off. He is single and grounded out. Good World Series average for him. Batting about 240 now in the postseason overall. And the fans might be wondering why that happens because the pitcher then can work on a hitter. He can expand the strikes up, try and make them chase a pitch that he likes, that a pitcher wants to make. This is another foul ball. So now Hershiz is way ahead on the cap to Renteria. He can dictate the rest of this at bat. He can throw pitches out of the zone, try and make them chase. Which will get him out easier. He won't give him a good pitch to hit. Hershiser, one of the fiercest competitors in the game. Tommy Lasorda used to be his manager in Los Angeles, said he had never seen a pitcher quite as fierce on the mound as Hershiser, who off the field is one of the quietest, most gentlemanly light ball players you'll ever meet. Personality transformation. It is all business. Yeah, I think there's a lot of players like that, though. Yes. It's not only yeah. him. You gotta have that in this game at this level. Yeah, you talk to pitchers the day they're not pitching, they're the nicest guys ever. So he tried to expand his own, he wouldn't chase that pitch. One ball, two strike count. Renteria, Sheffield, and Bonilla do up. Got him. Looks like might have been inside and high. The strikeout is his third. He's retired 10 in a row. He wasn't happy with this pitch because it's up in the zone and it kind of hung. Renneria saw it so well that he took too big a swing and missed it. And here's Hershiser's reaction. If you can read his lips, let's go. Bad pitch. Talking to himself out there. Gary Sheffield is single and lined out one for two. The last fish to reach base was Devon White with a double in the second inning. Interesting. Now, Mike Hargrove told us before the game, Ken, he gets a little worried when he sees Oral Hershiser starting to do that. When he starts talking to himself and trying to pump himself up, Hargrove said, I get a little worried because. He starts to overdo it. Thinks too much. Well, he's not going to get too excited as long as nobody's on base. <laughs> and so long as he's retired 10 in a row, he'll sit there and watch. And a base hit in the left field. So Sheffield has got his second hit. He's two for three. And that will be the sixth hit of the ball game for the Marlins. See now remember what I said about Hernandez having to settle down somewhat as he watched Sheffield get the base hit. Hernandez has settled down and it hasn't allowed the Indians to score in two innings. Which means that any time the Marlins get a man on base the tying runs at the plate. And it is here and it's Bobby Bonilla who fouls it off Alomar. Strike one. He's hit into a double play and lined out softly to short. Runner at first base and one away infield. Be looking for the double play ground ball. Bonilla hit us into a double play his first time up. He is not a speedy runner. Fast balls outside to him. One ball, one strike. I want to welcome all of you joining us on the Armed Forces Network around the world. Mark Ledford, Okinawa, Japan. Ask that we say hi to all of you and all the civilians. Who are working for the armed services worldwide? Great to have you with us here in our coverage, Major League Baseball International. 12 million folks. 1 1. 
And that pitch is outside. Two ball, one strike count on Bonilla. 0 for 6 for Bobby Bonilla over the last two nights. But he is dangerous to give you the long ball. Off speed pitch way outside that time. The importance of every pitch. That competition and concentration level is at its highest. One swing of the bat and the game can turn around and Hershiser is given up the second walk. And the Marlins have two on one down here in the sixth inning. If you'd like to keep up to date with the latest World Series news and updates we invite you to do so. And gather all the baseball information you can handle. Log on MLB at bat Major League Baseball's website just tap it in at www.majorleaguebaseball.com and let us know how you are enjoying the game. And we thank all of you who have done so. Great to hear from all of you around the world. Mike Hagro's world is pretty focused right now. It's all in front of him. Darren Dalton up. Runners on at first and second base with one down. Indians with a 4 2 lead. And Dalton, as Ken mentioned last time, has been red hot. We saw the numbers of 500 batting average in the World Series. A veteran hitter has been in this situation many times. Dalton representing the go ahead run lines at the left field. Giles over makes the running catch. Well, Two down. They mentioned Giles' ability to play the outfield. Strong arm, a lot of range in left field. Had to go a long way to make the catch. Darren Dalton more of a pull hitter. But Giles has the type of range that might make him be able to play center field. So less ground to cover in left field and he makes the play. Two away. Two on. Two run lead for Cleveland. Sheffield and Bonilla the base runners and Moise Salou. He has struck out and popped out. Four for 17 now in the World Series. One of the guys they count on to be productive, their leading RBI man during the regular season as he finished among the top 10 and runs batted in in the National League with 115. Alou voted the Marlins' most valuable player by their local baseball writers in Miami. And why not? Career high runs batted in with 115 during the regular season. And it's had two home runs in the series. Hit single season leaders born out Saturday night. Rod Carew, Matty Alou, Rod Carew again, Felipe Alou, and Tony Alou. Some good hitters in that family. Alou. And he takes that one away. One ball, one strike on him. Felipe, of course, the uh, father of Moises. Matty, his uncle. Another uncle, Jesus, works for the Marlins. Director of uh, Latin operations out of the Dominican Republic. 1-1 one, one the count. Step off here by Hershiser. Moving the runners back to the back. Hershiser threw one behind the head of Alou in this game that upset him. Alou hit a three run homer off Hershiser in game one. Alou has stared out at him and is at bats here. A two ball, one strike count. This is going to be a big pitch right here. Alou's ahead on the cap. Hershiser almost forced to throw a strike. Randy Marsh with the small zone. Right now, this is working against Hershiser. Hit in the air to deep center field. Marquise Grissom looking up. Way back. And it is gone. Goodbye, home run. Moise Salou, a three run homer. And the Marlins are back on top 5 4 as this personal battle continues. His second three run homer off Hershiser in this World Series. 
down here last night. I said this is going to be a key pitch. Man, right there and right on it. One of the longest home runs of this series. Last night they couldn't get it over the center field wall because of the wind. Wind not as strong tonight. Right over the cameras out in center field. Look at the Marlins rooting that ball out of here. What a blast by Moise Salou off Oral Hershiser. The fourth home run Hershiser has given up in this postseason year. And just like that, the Marlins have a one run lead in this game. And it's all because Hernandez settled down the last two innings and kept the hot Indians off the board, kept his team in the game, gave him a chance to come back. Well, now it's on. Hernandez's shoulder to shut down the Indians even further. Ground ball, that's going to be a base hit into left field. Giles coming in to get it. And Conine is on. His first hit of the game, one for three. And now the Marlins out hitting the Indians, 8 4. And that will bring Mark Wiley, the pitching coach, to the mound to talk to Hershiser. And it's been the breaking ball that's been his undoing. Conan gets a hit on one that's up, and Alou hit one that was right in the middle of the plate and center. Alvin Mormon is up in the bullpen. First bullpen action we have seen in this game, and that action's a result of this at bat. There's the here's the home run once again. And watch the breaking ball. Watch it stay right there. Alou knew he hit it well. And watch him react as it goes over. Yep, he, he kind of knows it's gone. Yep. You get that feeling when you hit one. 416 feet and out of the ballpark for Alou. You, you hit it so well that you have a feeling it just can't stay in here. And a big cut taken by Charles Johnson with two down a runner at first base. Johnson an RBI single and is struck out. Hershiser gave up 26 home runs during the regular season. That was among the top 12. That one drill. Giles is going to play that on a hop. And he'll get it back in holding Conine at second base. But they are tagging the ball now in the sixth inning. Nine hits off Oral Hershiser. Runners at first and second. Two down. Charles Johnson drills another breaking ball. And this goes into left field for a base hit. This is about the time the last game. Hershiser went four in the third, giving up seven hits or six hits and seven runs. And tonight he's given up nine hits in five and two thirds. And Mike Hargrove has seen enough. That's going to be it. So Oral Hershiser, who came into this World Series year with the fourth best postseason earned run average in history, has been knocked out again by the Florida Marlins as they have picked up five runs on nine hits and the fans recognizing Hershiser, it may be his last appearance as a Cleveland Indian. free agent who may be gone at the end of this year. He is gone tonight. Who comes up later? Here's a breaking ball. It's up once again. Bad pitch. You can get away with it to Renneria, but to a Lou and a home run hitter like him, you can't do it. It's really a bad pitch with particularly two men on base. And Oral Hershiser hit up high. There's his line in 10 innings in the World Series. 12 runs on 15 hits surrendered by Hershiser. A 10.80 earned run average. Now Alvin Mormon on in relief. Run is at first and second. Two down. Craig Council takes it outside. And Ken, what Mike Hargrove told us before the game, as you look at Mormon's numbers, if Hershiser starts talking to himself, I get worried. He started talking to himself and it all fell apart. He tries to overthrow and more home runs are hit on bad breaking balls than they are on fastballs that are well located or even not well located because a good fastball is the easiest pitch to control. You can throw it to a good spot even if you miss it's just out of the zone but a bad breaking ball is up there to be hit by anybody. 
So now it's the bullpen. It's going to be relied on with Hershiser watching. Council has rounded out and walked. 2 0 count on him here. The left hander Mormon. And a foul ball off his foot. We talked about that earlier tonight in answer to a question, Kenny, about hanging breaking yeah, balls. Yeah. What is a breaking ball? And when it doesn't break, the danger it poses for pitchers. Yeah, and uh, we mentioned this earlier, too, in the series that a sixth inning breaking down. ball is unlike a first inning one. When a pitcher is fresh, he's throwing hard, has a lot of snap in his arm, it can really break off the breaking ball where it's very sharp and he throws it hard. But when you get to the sixth inning and you start to get a little tired and you don't have that force behind the arm and the arm speed, Breaking ball a few miles per hour comes off of it kind of hangs a little bit doesn't break as sharply Hershiser sensed it the Renteria but he paid for it to a loop. Now a very nervous Mike Hargrove is going to rely on this bullpen. Council is just walking around trying to walk off that foul ball off his foot two down two on Marlins up by a run. Mormon misses inside three balls and one strike. Mormon has not worked as you saw very much here in the postseason. Four games but only an inning and two third. A couple of unearned runs off him. He's walked two and struck out two. Three one delivery to Council and the bases are loaded. So the inning continues for Florida here in the sixth. And that's going to be it for Mormon. He will face only one batter. Kind of tells you that Mike Hargrove feels that uh, Devon White is less of a threat batting left handed if he brings in a right handed pitcher here. So Mormon will end up working no part of an inning surrendering a walk. He'll be responsible for the base runner council who is on. Cargrove said I've only got a couple of guys for long. An amazing ball game and a good one. Florida's got the 6-4 lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. For all of our viewers in Australia, Major League Baseball International is going to be visiting your corner of the world this November and December. It's the 97th International Baseball Festival coming down under. Those are the cities and those are the dates. You can experience the sights and sounds of America's pastime. Take a turn at bat. You get to throw a pitch and see how hard you throw. Run the bases. You can even have your own baseball card made up. It's like a day at the ballpark. Those of you in Australia, we hope you'll take advantage of it and enjoy 97 baseball festival. Well, Jimmy Leland told us before the game, he said, I told my pitchers, just give us a chance. Devon Hernandez has done that. He has the last couple of innings. Earlier in the game, it looked like he might be out of it quickly as he gave up four runs in the combined in the second and third innings. Indians left the bases loaded in the second two more on in the third. He retired the side in order in the fourth and faced only three in the fifth. Brian Giles leads it off. He has walked twice in this game two of seven walks. Given up by LeVon Hernandez in the game outside ball one Hernandez had a long rest on that long half inning. You know Hernandez in the same situation he was in at game five of the National League Championship Series which at that time was tied at two games apiece. But there's one major difference to that and we've talked about Eric Gregg and that, that's that's not that's a difference. Certainly Eric Gregg had a bigger strike zone that day. Hernandez has walked seven today but he's in the enemy park today. He's not he's not a pro player stadium. It's that breaking ball in one ball two strikes. And you must continue to admire these rock solid stamina of this guy. He is cool. Literally here tonight, but he drops that breaking ball in for a strike. One ball, two strike count. Looking to become the first rookie ever to win four postseason games. One two delivery. And that pitch is 
is a strike three call. Third base umpire Dale Ford said he went around. Giles is retired. Second strikeout for Hernandez. The home plate umpire has a hard time making the call on check swing strikes. That's why they appeal to a third base umpire with a left handed hitter at the plate. And it did look to me from that angle that Giles went around too far. You'll see the reaction yeah, every time on the bench. The opposition bench, he swung. And in the other dugout, they hoped that the umpire didn't see it. Oral Hershiser stands to lose this ball game. Five and two thirds innings, six runs, nine hits, walk two, struck out three. He'll sit and watch now in the dugout. Marquise Grissom coming up. He has single, grounded out. And a fly ball to center field. Devon White. Grissom is retired, two down. Kenny, do they get concerned about the pitch count now for Hernandez? He's thrown 107 pitches here tonight. He threw 141 in the victory over Atlanta. He's worked out of the bullpen. I would think that uh, Jimmy Leland and Larry Rothschild know exactly how many pitches he's thrown. And if he gets through this inning, one, two, three, I think they'll let him go one more in. Down low to Beck Roberts. Roberts, two walks, and is lined out. And those second and third innings, like I mentioned, when he gave up the four runs, those were the heavy innings. That's when they scored the runs. A strike taken by Roberts. Two ball, one strike count. Well, here Able to shut him down, facing only nine over the last three innings, so he's gotten the job done. Now we are going to see Jeff Juden. Four games worked here, an inning and two thirds in postseason play, four walks. He struggled with control, has struck out only two. Marlins will try and add to their lead now. 6 4. They have uh, quieted the house here at Jacobs Field in Cleveland by going back on top. They're out hitting the Indians 9 4. Gary Sheffield, towering fly ball, center field. Frankie's Grissom on the warning track. And Sheffield is retired one away in the seventh inning. Well, Sheffield the first out Bobby Bonilla coming up to face Juden. Jeff Juden did not expect to be used in this game. Really the last guy in the bullpen if you will for the Cleveland Indians their fourth pitcher used here tonight as Mormon worked no part of an inning and walked a batter plunk two thirds a walk and a strikeout. Hirsch eyes the start. Remember back to game three of the series. When the Indians used everybody in the bullpen, well, they didn't quite. Juden was the only one who didn't pitch in that game. That probably tells you something about the confidence the manager doesn't have. Bobby Bonilla, one ball, two strike count. Juden can throw hard, but can he throw strikes? That was left in the bullpen for Mike Hargrove. Fly ball right field way up there Ramirez over two down tell you Sheffield and Bonilla just didn't get on top of those fly balls or else they would have been long home runs June the fly ball pitcher keeps the fastball up in the zone does throw hard just hard enough you know the difference of a home run and a high deep fly ball is about an eighth maybe a quarter of an inch on the back. Bonilla just didn't get on top of it. Juden's throwing 96 miles an hour. 26 year old out of Salem, Massachusetts. Major League record of 19 wins, 17 losses. Has got two down here and a 2 0 count on Darren Dalton. Dalton with a double and a run scored. 
Marlins have scored all six of their runs with two down in this game and there's another towering pop up outside of first base told me there were any clouds it'd be raining three up three down he only threw eight pitches to get the outs seventh inning stretch time of the Jake and Cleveland Marlins lead it by two. City of Cleveland founded in 1796. They were playing baseball then too. This copyrighted telecast of property, the office of the commissioner of Major League Baseball, is intended for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Acting Commissioner Bud Seeley. Frank Robinson just got up and moved away. He was sitting next to Bud Selig. Paul Beeston with the white hat on, president of Major League Baseball. Watching the ball game here in Cleveland, and it's a good one. This has the World Series drama and atmosphere. Bottom of the seventh inning, LeVon Hernandez faces Omar Vizquel. And a strike taken. 0 for 2 and a sacrifice for Vizquel is 4 for 19. Here in the World Series and the 2 3 4 hitters are 0 for 8. They need some base runners now. Breaking ball to second base. Council. One down. Well, the Indians basically in the same situation the Marlins were. Just an inning ago in the sixth when they needed to get some men on. Marlins got the big blast of home run from Moises Salou. Mike Hargrove's team quite capable of doing the same thing. Alomar's already delivered a home run, a three run shot in the third inning, but that is the last scoring opportunity the Indians have had. One away here. Ramirez 0 for 3. He hasn't hit the ball out of the infield tonight. And he will this time on a bad hop single. Council was ready to play that and it shot up over his head. At the baseball guard smiled on the Indians. Ramirez with a single. He hits this one hard. Look at the spin on it, too, coming off the bat. Up off the glove of Council. Did a pretty good job of trying to flag it down. Almost tore his glove off on the way in the right field. And Manny Ramirez, well, you're right, it did take a little extra hop on it. Up over the glove, he thought he had it. Yep, but he's still looking in there. Went higher than he thought it was going to go. Now the potential tying runs at the plate. David Justice over three. He hasn't had a ball out of the infield tonight. Down low for a ball. Justice one for six against Levon Hernandez and Dennis Cook in the bullpen. And he has been one of the best out of the bullpen for the Marlins during the course of postseason. Hernandez got to be getting around 115 pitches or so. 160 or so. <laughs> <laughs> That's close enough. For yeah. And a 2 0 count on David Justice. Levon Hernandez got the victory. In game one, five and two thirds innings, three runs, eight hits. Working here in a 2 0 count will step off. Ramirez back to the bag. The way this inning seems to be going with Dennis Cook warming up in the bullpen, if it gets down to Jim Tomei, with men on base, I think you'll see Cook come in this game. Indians trying to get the lead back, strike taken. He has used that off speed breaking ball all night on David Justice. Just taking enough off of the curve. If it's a heartbreaking ball, Justice will have a good swing at it. But you see how he's already committed? And takes it for a strike. Plus, it was a 2 0 pitch. You didn't have to swing at that. 2 1 the count. Justice holds up. Got fooled again. 2 and 2. 
The big pitch in the 15 strikeout game for Hernandez was his curveball to the left handed hitters. He's going with it again tonight. Johnson laying down the signs. Runner at first base, one away. Justice 2 2. Reaches for it. Back to Hernandez. Renteria. There's one. Throw to first. Double play. Levon Hernandez continues to sparkle. The 22 year old. Four straight scoreless innings. Another curveball. Right back to the mound. It remains a 6 4 Marlins lead after seven. In game one, LeVon Hernandez became the youngest pitcher in history to win the opening game of a World Series. And here's how he took care of Justice. Fastball, breaking ball missed. Dropped the curveball in there nicely for a strike. Stayed with it for another one. And then gets him on another one. Three straight curveballs. Four of the six pitches were curveballs. And he gets the double play to get out of the inning. Now he's got a chance to become the first rookie to win four postseason games in one year. What a job he is doing. We are in the eighth inning. 6 4 lead for the Marlins. Jeff Juden. And the pitch is taken outside. Moise Salou, the huge hit in this game. Sixth inning, three run homer. His third of the postseason, two three run shots off Oral Hershiser. A defining moment so far in this game. One and two. Alou and Juden were teammates with the Montreal Expos last year. Juden traded to Cleveland. Alou leaving the Expos as a free agent. And a tapper, Juden. Right into the runner, but he didn't get it. Did not get him. Tommy pulled off the bag according to the first base umpire Ken Kaiser. And Mike Hargrove will come out to argue. Well, Ken Kaiser makes the call. Let's see if it's a correct one. To throw the first, does Tommy come off the bag? To me, it looks like he's out, doesn't it? Looks like he stayed on the bag. Here's the throw. Tomei has the ball. Alou touches the bag. Let's listen to it. He's out. Hit the glove first. He's out, but he's not. And Mike Hargrove heads back. It'll be ruled an infield single that he beat it out. That'll be the tenth hit of the game now for the Marlins. And Alou is on with his second, two for four. Now Jeff Conine. Conine has delivered a single in three at bats and has scored a run. See how big that call proves to be here in this game. Well, it forces Juden, who's a big man, six foot eight, to work out of the stretch. And sometimes a big pitchers like that have problems when they're forced to go to the stretch and mechanics are thrown off. Alou's running. Throw down Alomar from his knees, not in time. Juden did not hold him. And at second base, Roberts thought Alou would come off the bag after the slide. Alou got banged on the head as he went into the knees of Bip Roberts. Uh, Luke gives it the effort going in the second. It looks like Roberts is okay. There's some contact on the end of this play. Pitches a called strike. Alomar throwing uh, from just about his knees. You can see the head of Alou go right into the knee of Bip Roberts. Oh, right there. It looked like a football play. And he may have come off the bag. He had it covered, but his body was up over it. And that's what Roberts was arguing. There's a collision right there. Head on the, part of the bag. For a moment there, there was no part of him touching that bag, I don't think. Watch Alomar throw it from his knees. Didn't even get up. Well, it's a stolen base. And a 
ground ball to first. Tommy gobbles that one up. Good job by Conine to move the runner up. He gave himself up on that. Talking about baseball fundamentals, a man in second with nobody out, a chance to advance him to third. Conine picks out a pitch he can hit the other way and drills it. And the Indians going to have to bring the infield in. Trying to cut off the runner at third. Only one away. Charles Johnson. Infield drawn in. Alou at third base. And a base hit into center field. Alou will score. And it is a 7 to 4 Marlins lead. And Johnson has his third hit and his second RBI of the game. Johnson now has what 11 hits and 10 runs batted in, in the postseason. <laughs> Whenever he gets a hit, he seems to deliver a run. And Ken Kaiser might have gift wrapped one for the Marlins there. Two calls there. at second base. That's Ed Montague on your left. That's Ken Kaiser on your right. First of all, Alou's going to be out at first base. There's the play. You can see it clearly that uh, his foot has not made contact with the bag. He's out. Then at second base. Now watch the key here as Biff Roberts keeps the tag on him. He has the ball, and you can see that Alou has come off the bag, and he has the tag on him. See, he's not on the base. So Alou living a charmed life. He was out twice and scored a run. Yep, out at first, out at second, but safe at home. Well, Lawson Mocker now. There's Alou who scores a run here in the eighth inning. Charles Johnson, the RBI is on at first base. Austin Marker, 1 0 in the postseason. Seven innings, 10 hits, three walks, and eight strikeouts off him. And again, a throw over to first base. Only one down. A much quieter Jacobs Field. World Series tied, two games apiece. The Marlins will take the series back to Florida for Saturday. They've got a 7 to 4 lead. And they are out hitting the Indians now 11 to 5 in this game. Marlins had an early 2 nothing lead. The Indians went ahead 4 to 2, but since then it's been all Marlins. Great Council fouls it back. Two ball, one strike count. The Florida Marlins during the regular season had 42 comeback wins. Here in the postseason, they have had four comeback wins. If they hang on here, it will be their fifth. Jimmy Leland's battling fish. 2 1, foul back 2 and 2. Well, smelling sauce in the uh, dugout. That's one way of waking yourself up. Maybe a little uh, groggy yeah. from that slide into second base uh -huh. when he collided with Bip Roberts. His head hit Roberts' knees. Two to the count. Inside, three balls, two strikes. I'm, I'm sure there's a few of us out there have been a little groggy but still found our way home. You're talking about last night? <laughs> three, two. Paul Eisenmanger, the left-hander. Runner not going, fouled off by Council, no play on this. And it will remain a 3-2 count. The Marlins can win this game. They get to go home, needing to win only one of two, and they've got their ace on the mound, Kevin Brown, tomorrow. Yeah, this was the same formula that uh, beat the Atlanta Braves. Hernandez gave them a good effort in game five for a win. Came out with Kevin Brown, and he uh, shut the door on Atlanta. Ended their season. 3-2. And Council, typical of his at-bats here in the postseason, continues to fight pitches off. At 44,888 on hand here, Jacobs Field tonight. Being seen around the world. Hope you are enjoying it. This has had a real World Series flavor and is not over yet. 3-2 delivery. 
Council fights it off again. This guy puts a tough at bat on every time he goes up there. Doesn't waste an at bat. Makes the pitchers work. He's a tough out out of the ninth slot when he's in the American League parks. And he's a tough out out of the eighth spot when they're playing the National League rules, hitting in front of a pitcher. Ninth pitch to him will be coming up. On a 3 2 count with one away. Throwing over to first base. Johnson might be running here on a 3 2 count to try and break up a double play. Not going. Another foul ball. Jimmy Leland said that was a. He gave credit to the scout, Dick Egan, who made the trade, who told him, let's get this kid uh, from the Colorado Rockies. Certainly helped out their infield. Rockies had three second basemen at that time, so they could give up one. Council was in the minor leagues. Yeah. Three two again, and he struck him out. So Austin Marker ultimately wins the war, but what a battle. Two down. Comes with the sweeping breaking ball, and this has been an Austin Marker trademark for years to left handed hitters. Well, you need an extendo bat to hit that one if you're a left handed hitter. Now there are two down. And it'll bring up Devon White, top of the order, leadoff batter. He had an RBI double in the second inning and an RBI bases loaded walk in the sixth. Asamaga trying to work his way out of this inning. A run already in. Ahead on the count on two. Really not that warm, folks. Stay at two strikes on the foul ball. Well insulated, though. <laughs> the last chance here at the Jake to see their Indians in this 97 year. White takes it inside. Alomar the stop. And a one ball two strike count Johnson stayed at first base. Now Devon White reacting to uh, where that pitch actually was stopped by uh, Sandy Alomar. So he's given him some time to recover because he knows that last pitch hurt. One two Whoa. take him the other way that time and he saved a wild pitch Alomar did two in a row he saved fastball up that's where they want it yeah he got it up all right oh it's up on the screen nice stop by Alomar down to third fair ball goes into the corner Making the turn white interference at shortstop. There's an interference call here. Ball gets away. Asenmacher backing it up. Rounding at second base that time. Johnson ran into Vizquel. Now the question is, should he get another base? I don't think they're going to give him one here. Or uh, Roberts, rather. Here's the ball down the third base line by Matt Williams. Charles Johnson. Will be rounding at second and headed for third. Now here's Giles getting the ball back in. Here's a look at Charles Johnson on the hit. Now it looks like he gets a late start. Now watch when he rounds second. They head for third. Mister's in his way. Ed Montague points to it. If Johnson had been thrown out at third, he wouldn't have been out. They would just declare him safe at third base. Edgar Renteria takes a strike. 12 hits up on the board for the Marlins. Credit White with a double. So Devon White has had two doubles now in this ball game. Edgar Renteria, two down, and a two-strike count. 
to the infielders are not allowed to impede the progress of base runners. I mean, if that was the case, it'd be a whole different game. So once uh, you make contact or stand in the baseline, like Biff Roberts did, interference is called by the umpire. Renneria, who struck out twice in the sixth inning, first player in World Series history to do that, trying to avoid a strikeout here. They do not ask at first. It remains a one ball, two strike count. Two in scoring position, two down, a 7 4 lead for the Marlins. A, one, a run in this inning, and the Indians now down by three. Renneria. It's a huge at bat right here. Yeah, this is the guy they want to get out. I'm sure they don't want to face Gary Sheffield with the bases loaded. They certainly don't want to give up any more runs. Deep to left field by Renneria. Giles back has room and makes the catch at the wall. One run. Three hits. Two are left stranded. The Indians will have two more chances. They are trailing by three. Florida with a 7-4 lead here in game five. The World Series being tied at 2-2. Someone goes to Florida with the advantage. And both teams go to Florida and so do we. Major League Baseball International's continuing coverage of the 1997 World Series. The Indians and the Marlins will continue from Miami, Florida, Saturday at 7.30. Chad O.J. and Kevin Brown, the scheduled starters, 7.30 Eastern Time, Saturday. They are rocking the Jake, trying to help their team out. Ravon Hernandez has gone the distance. The dining club here. The animal club there. <laughs> Matt Williams leads it off. Williams, Tommy, and Alomar. Ravon Hernandez has struck out two and walked seven, but has not given up a run since the third inning. He has faced the minimum three batters in each of the last four innings. So one good thing about uh, this inning for Hernandez, Jim Tomey, a good power hitting left handed hitter, cannot come up with the uh, tying runs on base. He's batting second, but Alomar can. So he's got to get one of these first two guys out. Leadoff man has been on twice in this game for Cleveland. That one drilled to center field and a base hit knocked down by White. Big turn by Matt Williams. His first hit and the Indians have the leadoff man on. Hit number six. For Hernandez, this is the key man to get out. If he doesn't get Tomei out, I believe he's coming out of the game. Matt Williams with a base hit. First fastball was up. That breaking ball's up. That's an indication of pitchers getting tired. But he can't force the ball down in the strike zone. Jim Tomei, a triple, a walk, hit into a fielder's choice. He has scored two runs in this game. Seven innings. Of gutted out performance by LeVon Hernandez. Remember, he's facing a Cleveland team that came into this game hitting 340 in the World Series, the highest number ever. They are six for 24 in this game, about 250. He has really done a job and had to do it with men on base for the seven walks he's given up. 0 oh, 1 count. Jim Tomey to left field. Alou backing up. Has room. Tomey's retired. One down. One away. 
Julie Croto. We've got a report from her. Who's down there at field level tonight, Julie? No. Are you going to me, voice? I just spoke with it with the Marlins trainer. He said obviously Alou is okay He's back out in the field, but he did get shaken up quite a bit. He hurt his neck a little bit. Can Herb score to bring it? Uh, he had one of the livest arms and uh, best fastballs in the American League. But 34 years behind the mic, and uh, what a way to go out. Yeah, the Cleveland Indians make it to the World Series. Still with a chance to win it. And that, of course, is what he is hoping for. He has lived through some rocky seasons, boy, with this ball. Nice what did they say? He's seen over 2,800 losses. Imagine that. And there were some a lot of seasons where it was a hundred loss season. Oh, oh yeah. The municipal stadium. Bobby Bonilla. Mesa's pitches up high to him. Two balls and one strike on Bonilla. Bonilla's drawn a walk in the sixth inning and scored. 0 for three tonight at the plate. is inside three balls and one strike and Mesa stares in didn't like the call made let's check this pitch out again of course we have the uh, benefit of the replay that looked pretty good so did that. that time and that is going to be a fair ball down the line Bonilla got a late start Ramirez in the second base Bonilla will chug in with a stand up double he ripped that one into the right field corner and with one away but he is on at second base his first hit of the game. Well the fact that Mesa didn't get the previous pitch called the strike he comes back with another one a little bit better to hit Bonilla can anticipate he's already seen the previous pitch and rockets one down the line and then uh, with that give me leg and all gets into second for two base hit. Now with that Gibby leg this time Jim Leland is going to run for him. Bobby Bonilla will come out of there in a 7 4 Marlins lead. They would dearly love to get that runner in from second. So Alex Arias, one of the two spare infielders, along with Kurt Abbott on this team, will come on as the pinch runner. And will, unlike, will probably stay in the ballgame at third base. Bonilla's out of there. Pinch runner in. Darren Dalton up, has doubled and scored. In four at bats in the game. 13 hits now on the board for the Marlins. Mesa, fastball, strike in the inside corner. These tack on runs, if you can get them, often prove to be enormous. Take it inside. Only one away. One ball, one strike count on Dalton. Yeah, that extra run out there, if they can get the Arias home, that would mean that the, uh, in effect, that the Indians would have to get a grand slam to tie the game. have to score four runs just to tie. Two managers both standing. That's going to be another Dalton base hit. Yes. No start, though, for Arias. He goes to third and will stop there. Ramirez taking the chance trying to make that shoestring catch trapped it area stops at third and Dalton's got another base hit. Yeah Arias really had to hold up in case that uh, Ramirez catches his ball and he can't advance. He sees him leave his feet. I'll tell you what he was lucky that ball went into his glove. It gets by him. Arias will score. Dalton has another hit or an extra base hit. He already has a single as the ball as uh, short hops into the glove. You know Arias starts. He sees the dive. The ball falls in. You know that's good base running. You don't take a chance. He's already in scoring position. Now he's over at third with one out. Dalton is now seven for 15 in the series. A 467 batting average for Darren Dalton. And Moise Salou, two for four, three run homer and a single line drive, base hit into center field. Marquise Grissom will get it back in. Another RBI for Alou. 
a four RBI game his third hit two singles and a home run in five at bats he came in four for 15 in the World Series and Mesa does not do the job here. Alou goes down and gets a pretty good fastball drives it into center field for a base hit but in this inning the Marlins have been all over Mesa's hard stuff. I mean they've hit the ball hard. Bonilla did Dalton did now Alou does and they pick up that run and he makes it now an eight to four game we we're talking about the grand slam situation and they're not done yet. Mace is throwing hard 96 but uh, it's fairly straight and towards the middle. These Florida Marlins who just seem to get offensively stronger as the game goes along are starting to empty the Jake. An 8 4 lead they have out hit the Indians now 15 to 6 in this game. And Mike Hargrove is pitching did not come through. Runners go well, one does over to third base is Dalton Mesa never looked at him and Darren Dalton took off Mesa never turned around at second base just for, like he forgot that the runner was out there. You know that's something Dalton probably saw from first base when he was over there after the base hit that Mesa wasn't checking the runners. So he figures if I get the second well he gives him a little look there but not enough. Dalton not known as a guy who steals many bases but he had six this year. That's a key one. He's a third with one out. And a pop up. Roberts the second baseman runner tagging won't go anywhere. Roberts gets it back in. So Conine is retired. That will be the second out. Here in the top of the ninth inning a run in three hits two still on Charles Johnson coming up to face Mesa Johnson's had a good night three hits a run scored two runs batted in now the Marlins team we mentioned earlier they have not lost consecutive games in the postseason and right now they're not going to have it happen here either. Runners at first and third, two down. Johnson fouls it back, strike one. Six pitchers have been used in this game by the Indians. Oral Hershiser. The Marlins here in the World Series. Down low. One ball, one strike on Johnson. They can see tonight the Marlins 15 hits, the Indians six. Last night, the Indians 15 hits, the Marlins six. These games have flip flopped back and forth. The resiliency of the Marlins coming right back after a loss. Check swing went around home plate umpire uh, makes a call on Johnson that time Randy Marsh and a one ball two strike count on Johnson. And strike three call Mesa gets the K. However a run added. On three hits, two are left on. The bottom of the ninth inning coming up, and LeVon Hernandez, chance for a complete game. Is going to be giving the chance to get another complete game against the Indians. Well, Mike Mike Grove will pace. Yeah, Mike Cargo uh, basically uh, almost now in the same situation that Bobby Cox was after game five when the Marlins took a three to two lead in the National League Championship Series. And Bobby Cox's quote was, We can win two in a row. We've done it a million times. But Kevin Brown was waiting. And he's waiting for Mike Hargrove and the Indians. But he might already be back in Florida. He'll be starting game six. 
The top of the order, Bip Roberts, Vizquel, and Ramirez. 340 in the first four, 222 tonight. Levon Hernandez. He has struck out only two and has walked eight. Most he has walked in a game. He has thrown 135 pitches. He has one complete game in the postseason. And he's got a chance for another here, an 8 4 lead. Yeah, I think uh, Jimmy Leland thinking this is the last time he's going to pitch this year. Biff Roberts, Conine, the flip, Hernandez, one. No, he's safe. He's safe. Came off the bag. He came across the bag too soon. Didn't have the ball. And Ken Kaiser immediately called him safe. Wow. Well, let's watch it. We've already had some controversy with a loop going down the first base line. Never Maybe touched. He says he missed the bag. Randy had plenty of time to make this play. There's the ball. And he says he doesn't touch the bag. Wow. Well, you can stop in the middle of that thing if you want to, you know. It is an error on Hernandez. Well, it looks like there might have been a reason why to call him safe. He oh. won. Omar Vizquel. Now you see why that extra run in the top of the ninth inning makes such a difference. Leadoff man's on, but the Indians have got to come up with four. Rodnan, the closer for the Marlins, warming up. This gal will take, trying to draw a walk, 2-0. Oh. Well, he mentioned Jimmy Leland likes to bring men in, leading off an inning. Giving him some room to maneuver. This gal 0 for 3 in a sacrifice, taking all the way. Ball three. Is slowing it down. Three all pitch, three and one. A 22 year old. Mike East Grissom. Along with the rest of the Indians, hoping against hope. Three one. That's going to be a base hit, and they got the right center field. Bip Roberts on his way to third. He'll be held there. White gets it back in. Two on. Nobody out bottom of the ninth inning. He's got to take him out. He's got to give Ned some room to maneuver when he comes in the ball game. What I mean is don't let him come in in a situation where the tie runs into play. Give him some room to maneuver. The base hit by this gal, Bip Roberts, who shouldn't be on base, is headed for third. As Devon White will get the ball back in. There's a reaction of the Indians. They sense something is brewing. A great performance by the 22-year-old rookie, LeVon Hernandez. Eight plus innings, seven hits. He struck out two, walked eight. He is responsible for the two base runners on through 142 pitches. Now it will be up to Rod Den to try and shut down this ninth inning rally. لو كان للحيتان أن تنطق فماذا تقول لنا؟ لو كان للدلافين أن تنطق فماذا تقول لنا؟ لعلها تذكرنا بأن الأرض كوكب مائي وأن المياه قوام الحياة. فإن تابعنا تلويث دم الحياة للكوكب عانت من ذلك كل الكائنات أصغوا إليها
الدوري الانجليزي الممتاز على اوربت اس بي ان الرياضيه الاحد في الثالثه والدقيقه الخمسين بعد الظهر المتصدر ارسنال الذي فاجا الجميع ببدايه القويه يستضيف استون فيلا الذي يريد وضع حد لهذا التفوق والاثنين في السابعه والدقيقه الخامسه والخمسين مساء ليس ليقارن لكن عليه ان يقاط من ويست هام صاحب المفاجات الدوري الانجليزي الممتاز برعايه شركه الحاج حسين علي رضا وشركائها المحدوده الوكيل العام في المملكة شركة الحمران المتحدة So the Indians have life in the ninth inning. They are trailing this game eight to four. Runners on at first and third. Nobody out. Rodnin in to face Ramirez, the number three hitter, who has singled in four at bats. Ramirez 0 for one against Nin, and he takes a strike. In game three, Rob Nen worked an inning and gave up four runs on three hits. Levon Hernandez still stands to win this game. He'll sit and watch. Ramirez fouls it off, and Nen is ahead on the count two strikes. Well, Nen had a rough outing here in game three. Threw 43 pitches in the ninth inning. Although he was throwing a couple of pitches over 100 miles an hour. But uh, tonight he looks like he's more business like getting the first two pitches in there for a strike. Jimmy Leland saying about the other night and then he says look the guy lives off adrenaline when he comes in in the game just to get his work in and isn't in a save situation. He just isn't the same kind of pitcher. Bring him in when it's on the line like it is now and he's a different guy. Going to find out. Well, it is a safe situation because the tying run is in the on-deck circle. Two strike count, Ramirez. That'll back you off in a hurry. Ramirez takes a long look. This is a severe smoke just to move him off the plate. Little we'll stare down. Nothing personal. <laughs> Just got a win. Yep. 99 mile an hour fastball, about two inches from your chin. Nan in the postseason, his seventh appearance, six innings. He's given up four earned runs, five total on six hits, striking out five and walking four. Johnson wants to be sure. There's no question about how they are going to work Ramirez. Victory, and he's won his fourth postseason game and becomes the first rookie ever to do it. One two pitch. Ramirez fights it off. Speaking of brushback pitches, I was. Watching a game at uh, Precom Park in San Francisco, sitting in the stands, 
and a foul ball came in our section, and the lady got it sitting right in front of me, and she was so happy that she got a foul ball, she turned around and held it right in front of my face and said, have you ever seen a ball this close? And I said, unfortunately, I have. <laughs> and it was moving really quick. <laughs> no, I didn't tell her that. One, two, again fought off by Ramirez. <laughs> Faces tell the story, don't they, at this time in a ball game? For the Indians, they wanted to go on longer, and for the Marlins, they want to get this over as quickly as possible. One, two, delivery. Check swing. Did he go around? <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. I did not see a call at first base by Kaiser. I think the home plate umpire Randy Marsh made the call himself. Now let's take a look. You have to be ready to start the bat when the pitcher's throwing that hard. And it's quite evident that Manny Ramirez did go around. Then strikes him out. And you can see, yeah, way too far. Big strikeout. That's the call. Oh, my. Understated. David Justice, one down. Justice has had an 0 for 4, 0 for 3 rather in this game. Down to second base. This gal, there'll be no stolen base there. Defensive indifference is what that's called. Now, from a Marlins standpoint, as long as they keep the tying run in the on-deck circle, and you can see Matt Williams on deck, they'll be okay. Justice takes a strike, one and one. They certainly don't want Justice to get on or bring a run in, then bring Matt Williams up to the plate. Big part of that order, the RBI producers in the World Series, Williams, Tommy, Alomar. Those are the guys waiting. One down, one one delivered. Check swing. He went around. Strike called by Marsh. One and two. See, this is the problem when you face a guy like that who throws this hard. You have to start the bat because you know he's going to try and blow it right by you. And a lot of times the hitter will start on pitches just near the zone and they commit. They can't stop the bat quick enough. And they pick up strikes. Check swing strikes. Justice two for six against Nim. Bottom of the ninth inning, Marlins lead at 8 4. Two on, one down. Justice fouls it off, not getting around on the heat. I'll tell you, nothing fancy about that, Ben. Fastball after fastball. See if you can hit this. Nervous? You bet. One, two, deliver. Justice, base hit up the middle. One run will score. This gal the turn, he'll score. It is an 8 6 game. The potential tying run will come to the plate. Well, these runs will be charged to Hernandez. He's just has got a pitch he can handle. A fastball middle of the zone. And he delivers the base in. Keeps the Indians' hopes alive here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Man, what a ball game. This is a World Series game. Big hit for David Justice. There's still only one down. Now it is Matt Williams. He is three for nine against Nim. Slider, ball one. He's had a great World Series. Adding to it, a single tonight, two walks, and a run scored. Alomar in the hole. This is a great matchup here. A hard throwing pitcher and one of the best fastball hitters in baseball.
1 0 delivery. Williams a chopper. They turn two. The game's over. That's one. Relay counsel off the mark and into the dugout. The runner will go down to second base. Matt Williams. David Justice on the takeout slide on counsel. Prevented him from getting that throw over to try and turn two. But there are now two down. This is going to be a tough play to turn two on because Greg Maria had to go to his right. Once again, an accurate throw to second. Justice all over Council at second base as the throw goes into the dugout for the air. I think Council would have been better off holding, holding on to the ball. Usually it's Council all over Justice in the courtroom. That's right. <laughs> Two down, bottom of the ninth inning, an 8-6 game. Marlins lead. Nen talking to Rothschild, the pitching coach. Jim Tomey coming up. Tomey is one for two against Nen. You know, one reason I mentioned it, Council would have been better off holding the ball. Williams would have still been at first, and it meant there would have been a force at second for an easier out. Little less pressure on the infielders. But once again, you got the same situation. Another good fastball hitter at the plate against a hard throwing right hander. Nen. Tommy, he's going to have a base hit left center field. Williams will score. It is a one run game. How important was that run in the ninth inning? You were just talking about Talked it. Talked about it a hundred times. Yeah. Well, now the tying run is on first. Mention told me a good fastball hitter. Crank the very first one he saw for a base hit. Brings the Indians within one. Here is Alamai. Runner at first base, two down. He has picked up his fifth postseason home run in this game. Two hits, four RBIs already. 8-7 Marlins lead. Fastball, one and one. I'll tell you, if Ned holds on here, he's going to earn it. He's gone through some of the toughest hitters in Major League Baseball. Alomar 0 for 1 against Nim. Two down, 1-1. One, one. Alomar down to the final strike in the game for the Indians. That was just challenge. Right down the middle and Alomar couldn't get it. The tack on run in the top of the ninth inning is the difference in this game. One two delivery. Alomar fly ball to right field. Should be the ball game. Sheffield. The Marlins have won and they take a 3 2 lead in the 97 World Series back to Miami Saturday. Come from behind win. 15 hits in this game. Big plays all around. Council taken out on the slide at the plate. Alomar delivering the home run that came in the third inning. His fifth in postseason. His father on hand here tonight to applaud it. He would have four RBIs, but it wouldn't be enough. Alou in the personal challenge against Hershiser. His second three run homer against Oral Hershiser in this World Series. And it would be the blow that would take Hershiser out of the game, suffering the loss 0 oh 2 now in the postseason for Oral Hershiser. 
And for Mike Hargrove, the nightmare at home. They cannot take the advantage back as LeVon Hernandez won eight innings, six runs, seven hits, walked eight, and struck out only two. But he got the key outs, helped out by his defense in this game, and as a result, comes away with a victory and is 4 and 0 in postseason. The next game could be the last one. Rob Nen got the save here on Saturday. We'll be coming your way at 7.30. Chad O.J. and Mr. Brown will be making the start. This one is won by Florida 8-7. For Ken Singleton and Julie Croteau and our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you Saturday.